Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Tech. I'm Alan. I'm Thomas. And this is our fifth episode of Let's Talk Tech. Today, we're going to be talking about... MiFi. As our first segment, talk about MiFi, what it is, not so many people have heard of it, been on some commercials. We're also going to be talking about Microsoft Office 2007. Uh, what it is, you know, what comes with it. And we're also going to be talking... What's our third? <laughs> Sorry. Laptop versus desktop. Oh, yeah. Well, our third segment will be laptop versus desktop. Okay. Which, why, what, what do you think is better? Do you, would you rather carry around a desktop? I mean, a laptop, or would you rather be carrying around a desktop? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Because everybody carries around a desktop now. <laughs> anyway, we'll start off with our first segment, MiFi. My personal favorite. I chose it. I love it. Indeed. Okay, MiFi is a wireless... Wireless. Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's, it's what it says. It's basically a wireless wireless, where it's a wireless for everything that you use. Okay, so imagine your wireless router at your house. Well, your, your wireless router at your house, in order to plug it in, you have to... Okay, in order to, in order to get the wireless from your house, you can connect anything to that wireless. But let's say you are on the road, and they have, the, they have those chips, the USB chips that you plug in your laptop, so you can get any internet anywhere. Well, you can't plug that into a PS2, I mean a PSP, PSP, or you can't plug that into like an iPhone or an iPod Touch or whatever. So you can't do that. So the MiFi is basically, like we said, a wireless wireless, and it's basically, uh, yeah, at the bottom of the screen right there. And um, it, that's that size, and you can hold up to, I think it was 10 or 15 devices. And you just connect to it. Yeah, it's like a wireless at your house where there's a signal and you pick it up, but for like traveling, like it's in your pocket yeah. and you pick up your PSP, now your laptop. Except. Let's explain. I'll explain how this works because it's the same thing with anything. If you plug the USB port into your laptop, the wireless for the USB port in your laptop, same thing. There's a satellite up in space somewhere that dials in. That dials in and it goes down to your whatever your, your US your MiFi. Mi -Fi. And it goes on your MiFi, and your MiFi says, okay, I have the signal, I found the signal. Signal's either weak or strong, where it varies on where you go. And then that signal is sent out as a signal around you within, like, it's only, I don't know. It's only, like, 10, 15 feet. 10, yeah, probably 10, 15 feet. It's made to, like, if you're carrying around in, like, your PSP or, like, you're in the car. Yeah. And you have somebody in the back yeah. seat with a PSP, somebody up in the passenger side with yeah. a laptop or something. It's it's interesting. I actually like it because I wanted to do something. I have my crazy ideas, so I wanted to put something like that in my car, but they didn't have one at the time, and now they do. So I'd probably put one in my car like a stupid idiot that I am with yeah, my stupid ideas. you could ideas. have, like, you know, something in the back or a laptop or something for But people. it's really cool. It is, it's, really, it's really interesting, and I would rather use it be, I would rather use it for when I'm on the road so this, if I want to have a PSP with me or something like that, because I can't plug in my USB, I can't plug in my USB no. uh, wireless card. Yeah, you can't. How dial am I it. supposed to do that? So the MiFi is actually very useful. It's more for families that take um, big road trips. Yeah, big stuff. road trips. If you have a, like a big family and everyone has a PSP and whatever, you can't do that. So it's it's meant for stuff like that for when you go on trips and why uh, like I don't know. Yeah. Trips, yeah. yeah, big trips. And RVs or something like that. Yeah, or maybe you guys are going to Florida for the weekend or something. It just, just came out very recently, a couple oh, of months yeah. ago. Hasn't been out very no, long. No, I just saw it on TV, I don't know, about a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's very new. It's actually, you want to say who they're hosted by? Uh, Sprint, Verizon, and I believe AT&T is going to come out. Yeah, with I've been checking on that. I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if AT&T has it. I don't. He told me that, but I. I'm pretty check sure it. I looked into it, and it, they're coming out with one, and yeah. it's not out yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Sprint started it, and then Verizon came out with it later. That's right. But happened. yeah, um, you could go online. I'll have a link to it on the site. You can order it yeah, from you, Sprint well, and Verizon. Oh yeah, you go to go to like Verizon, go to an AT&T store. Um, Sprint store and ask and ask them for the uh, ask them about it ask them about the MiFi and they'll tell you what you need to know more than what we'll tell you how much it is yeah how much it is how much it costs well, per the month the prices range per per company per, company. per well so it depends on where you want to take it if you want to take a MiFi outside the United States it's more well obviously yeah it's more than if you want to just keep it inside the U S okay so yeah well it's I I I don't know what what do you actually would well, you would you use this? I think it's a great idea. Whoever came up with it is extremely smart. I mean, 
you're sitting there, you can't use your PSP online, you're connecting to randomless web, well, non-web <laughs> wireless. The thing is, is that this is like most inventions. It's so obvious. But nobody But nobody up. thinks of it until so much later. Hmm. And what I was thinking was, was maybe someone thought of the idea, white, like right when Wi-Fi came out, and that either they didn't publish the idea, they didn't get it copyrighted, or I'm thinking maybe they just didn't want to put it out at the time, thinking it wasn't popular. Or it didn't have the resources. Yeah. And because and now and it wouldn't be popular back then, but now that why now that PSPs now that PSPs out. are out and the PSI and then you have all those other ones out now it's going to be more popular. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to a commercial and we will be back with our next segment with Office. Office. Two thousand seven. This is close to the babe. You think this is close to the babe? Wait until you see the first show of hysterical sports. That's close to the babe. That's over. Yeah, now we can have a cigarette. I'll take one. Me too. Just, Just because they're models doesn't mean they're role models. Does anyone need a smoke? Yeah, I'm dying for one. Yeah, hand one over. Just because they're cool doesn't mean smoking is. Five, six, seven, eight. Hey! Guys, it's over. I need a break. Does anyone have a cigarette in their pocket? Sure. Role models rock. Smoking does not. I'm Alan. I'm Thomas. Any confusion? Don't yeah. ask me. All right, uh, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Office 2007 in this segment. Um, what's it about? And uh, what comes Would with it? Do you like it? Do you like the older ones or do you like the newer ones? And what comes with it? What's the new features in it? Okay, well, first of all, I have to say, I, I, wasn't exa I didn't like it when it first came out. I wasn't exactly a big fan of it. I thought it was very confusing. The ribbon especially threw me off. I'll, we'll explain what the ribbon is later. And uh, everything was kind of confusing with it. And then I actually, once I started using it, I, feel, I realized it's much easier than what I learned, but you had to get used to it. Yeah, um, like the, the, everything is all on the ribbon, which is up at the top. You could see a little symbol. You think it just looks like a symbol, but if you click on it, it drops down to the save, the save as, the print, yeah, the, the file pretty well, much. Well, what I found confusing was is that I couldn't find the save as section because I didn't know because I'm what couldn't find the print. We just used well, shortcuts. We, yeah, we couldn't. Well, yeah, we know the shortcuts to Office, so most of them. So we would just used shortcuts, but we couldn't find where the file menu was because file there wasn't a file menu anymore. It was the ribbon. So what you had to do is you had to click. There's a uh, let's see how can I describe it. It's uh, a, a little symbol. At yeah, the it's like top a top left corner. Yeah, like a little and you circular click on button. It. And and it's a drop down menu. Yeah, then, circular button, and it looks like the Office logo. It's in all the offices. Yeah. It's in the Microsoft, uh, the uh, Word, yeah. the uh, PowerPoint, Excel. Yeah, well, um, 
the, yes. yeah, the, yeah, one note and uh, yeah. So you click there and then that key, you could save the file as whatever you want it to. What I do like about this one is that you could save it as an older file. Because like before you'd save it as a file, you'd save the file and then like it would say, oh, well, you can't run Office, you can't run Office 2000 on, on a 97. 2000. Yeah, on Office 90, Office 3 or something. Yeah. yeah. So, well, no, 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 you can upgrade, but you can't downgrade. Yeah, no, yeah. and you couldn't, you yeah, couldn't run so, it. Yeah, so you couldn't run it, so that kind of pissed you off. But now what you can do is you could say save as, save as Word 97, save as Word 2000, save as Word XP, or Save uh, Word, as the yeah. format. You can save as the format of the year or whatever it came out as. So I like that a lot. That feature is good. Um, some of the new stuff that came out with the, uh, if you get the highest feature, if you get the uh, home and student, it comes, it comes with just... Excel, yeah, PowerPoint. Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, Word. which and, I don't like. But if you get the top edition, yeah, the, Enterprise uh, or Pro. Enterprise, Enterprise. Yeah. If you get the Enterprise edition, which I do enjoy, Enterprise comes with everything you're ever going to need, but it is also very expensive and meant only for businesses. It comes with Microsoft Outlook, PowerPoint, Word, um, Excel. OneNote. One yeah, OneNote. And then which Grove? We'll talk about. Grove. Yeah, Grove. Groove pa or Groove pad, yeah. Groove path or something like that. But yeah, we'll talk about let's talk about OneNote. OneNote is a newer program, at least to me. I don't know. I don't think it came out in it, XP. No, it, it did. It didn't come out for the the older one, the 2003. It didn't come out for those, but it did come out for the 2007, the okay. Office 2007. Yeah, I like that a lot. Just came out. Because what you can, what the uh, it's meant for people that can type really fast. So let's say you can type really fast. You're in college and you don't and you don't have good handwriting, but you can type really fast. You could take your laptop out, use OneNote. Use the program and join and, it on like a network. Yeah, and yeah, you could well, yeah, you join could. it or through the internet. Actually, that's would not something I never thought of. Um, you could join it. You uh, what Tom's talking about is you could join it through a network, which is true. So what you could do is in the future, the teachers. Yeah. If you have an advanced class, uh, your teachers could always um ha write notes down, and then it will automatically get sent to your desktop. Save the notes onto your computer as the teacher types them, so you don't have to take any notes. Yeah, and. Um, if you're doing a project and like a couple of people involved from different dorm rooms or whatever, it will actually send it to you straight. And you yeah, can it'll just, send it to you straight, you right can from there, change right the through the notes network. if you want, and yeah. it'll You'll send it send to them. It to, you could use, well, they ask you if you use it that you have to have a Hotmail account, but it doesn't matter if you have a Hotmail can, or a Gmail account. You can use a Gmail account. Yeah, you can use a Gmail account. As long as it's Hotmail. POP3, I believe yeah. it still works. Yeah. Um, it, but it basically just goes through the internet. So it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got internet, it's going to work. Um, but yeah, you have to send the invitation. So it is a bit of a pain once you get started. But once you get, once, once it works, started, yeah, it's yeah, fine. it's it's good. So yeah, college, take notes on the computer. Also, you can do a recording. You could record notes from what the teacher's saying and take them at the same time. So it's basically like that. Um, it's a pretty good program. It's like that digital pen we saw on TV, yeah. where it like records and take notes for you and then transfers it to the computer. But yeah, it's a very interesting. It's a program. very interesting program, which I, I, I definitely enjoy it. Yeah, it's a definitely, and it only comes with like pro or above, yeah. pro or enterprise. Mm -hmm. So you have to buy the good ones to get it. And um, so another, another new one is the GroovePad. Yeah, I've never used that. I used it a little bit. It's, it's an I okay. don't understand it. Yeah, it's an okay program. Um, a little confusing. I don't know. You have to have the enterprise to have it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. know we why. really don't know much about it. I, I don't know, know why you would use it. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Um, like PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. Pretty much the same. Yeah. Except They're pretty the much the same. There's ribbon. no difference. Excel is basically like Word, except with tables and charts automatically in there. And PowerPoint is, as most people know, it's a program for putting slideshows on, making a slideshow for work presentation. Yeah, presentations usually. Most sometimes you make it with you make charts on it, yeah. but um, it doesn't really matter. You can make it in anything. So, but the, the what they all have in common is the ribbon. What all office programs have in common is the ribbon. That, remember, we it's were talking, at the top. If it was at the top, it's this it's little icon, yeah. and that's where you save, print. Yeah. Well, well, it. no, no, not just no, no, no. Well, that's no. The ribbon's the whole thing. Yeah, I know. But oh. at the top <laughs> is where you can that top little icon. Oh, that you mean the circle? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the ribbon. So what it used to do is you used to say, it used to have it used to have a similar thing to a ribbon where it would ask you for 
text size, blah, blah, blah. But if you want to do other advanced features. You had to go into menus. You had to go into the menus and then do it and then set it up all like, all like that. And now, that was kind of confusing. Now there's just like tabs <coughs> almost. And you can flip through the tabs yeah. of what you need to do. And now, yeah, there's now a lot the of new tabs. Features. Now, if you, now in the other programs you did the same thing. You'd say uh, it was all and then it was the first letter of the tab. So if you want to go into file, it was alt F. Yeah, it was all F, and then it was, um, yeah, so on and so forth. And the same thing with here. But then when you go into it, it automatically displays to you all right of... Right at the top. Yeah, at the top, yeah. It displays to you all of the features that come with it. Okay. Was that the important announcement? I guess. Okay. We had a very important announcement I had no idea about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that, a very important announcement is the ribbon. The ribbon is big in Microsoft Office. It's yeah. the most important thing. I mean, once you're scrolling through it, I mean, it's one of the most best features that they put on there. It it's confusing. Be. That's what gets so confusing. It is confusing, you... but it, they made it more confusing for the better because there's more features and yeah, once you get the used features to it. are more laid yeah. out there. You have to get used to it, but it does. It, but it is much easier when I'm creating a word, when I'm creating an Excel file. I know that, like, I know how to do the forms and everything, the code to do how to do the forms and stuff for the addition, and subtraction, multiplication. But I prefer to do it automatically, have it have it done automatically for me. So you know that was it does get much easier. But wait till the Office 2010 comes out. That there's that's that supposed to be really easy. 2010 is supposed to come out pretty soon. I know it's not. Yeah, it is. It's supposed to come out end of 2009. Really? Beginning of 2010. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well we'll talk about we'll talk about that co a couple as, segments, yeah. Yeah, as soon as it comes out or Yeah, so. a couple shows we'll talk about that. Well probably a little bit before. We should yeah. talk about it a little bit before. Anyway, so all oh, on seven. And another what? big thing is if you have Windows two thousand, you cannot use uh, Office oh, two thousand seven. Oh, Yes. You Office have, seven only runs on XP. It's XP or above. Yeah. So if you have Office two thousand, don't get don't get the uh, don't get Office on seven. You have to have XP or above to be running it. So if you have office, if you have office, you can go. I don't know. Can you have office? Office two thousand three works on Office two thousand. Uh, it works on Windows two thousand. But anything higher than Office two thousand three, you have to have XP yeah. for, which is so. Basically, if you have well, basically if they don't have XP by now, if they're not running anything, if they're if, running lower than you, XP, if, then you should get a new computer. But if XP is usually XP higher, Vista, Windows seven RC. It's usually what people are running. Now, yeah, so. most people are running. Like I know Windows Seven is. Uh, I know a couple people. A lot of businesses are getting the program out already. Yeah. They have the program. It doesn't come out to October twenty second, but they have the program already. It's in the yeah. just vaults or yeah. whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So, but yeah, Office Seven, Office on Seven is actually a really nice program once you figure out how to use it. It gets it's confusing at first, but it does get easier as you go along. Yeah. So. You know, it, it, t it takes some time. Learn how to do it. You know, maybe you know, maybe you'll get a hang of it. Take some classes, probably, because there's other because people that if there's they, CDs out there. Yeah, there's CDs it. out there. Video professor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really don't like him, but he yeah, works. But I um, guess if you yeah. don't know what you're doing, if you, you don't know what you're doing, yeah, take or, some, or even just screw around yeah. with the program. Oh yeah, that's, that's what the we best, do. Yeah. That's the best way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we you know, it's it's gonna take some time. You know, it'll take some time. We are gonna go to a commercial, and we will be back. Okay. Yep, see you there. The following is a public service announcement. Hi, I'm John Michael, host of Creation. Today I'd like to talk about recycling. Can we really make a difference? Each year I use approximately 480 plastic bags from the grocery store. In the past, I've just thrown them out. Since starting my show Creation, however, I've come to realize that my habits are harming Mother Earth. So this year, I took an oath to go green in every possible way and to help promote a better understanding of what recycling really is. Why? Because I can make a difference. Now each time I go to the grocery store, I bring back my used plastic bags, a free service the stores provide us to help save Creation by recycling our used plastic bags to make new ones. Did you know that over 380 billion plastic bags are thrown in the trash each year, ending up in our landfills? And cities spend up to 17 cents per bag in disposal costs, thereby wasting millions of tax dollars. What are you doing to save creation? Help reduce waste. Please recycle your plastic bags. 
On behalf of creation, thank you. What did we talk about? All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Tech. Welcome I'm back. Thomas. And I'm Alan. And this segment we're going to be talking about laptop versus desktop. Laptop versus desktop. Wow, interesting. Okay, laptop versus desktop. So despite of any minor confusion I might have had in the beginning, we are not carrying around our desktop. Yes, <laughs> you carry around a laptop. Okay, so the different... So would you rather have a laptop or a desktop? Because it's portable, or would you rather have a desktop yeah, so because it, it's... Yeah. You it's, can change it easier. Yeah. Are you a portable person or are you a stay-at-home person? Pretty much that's what it comes down to. Do you I, think, I think every person should have a laptop and a desktop. Well, if you get a laptop, you definitely should have a desktop because it's kind of like a, a, a stay-it thing or it stays in one place. Yeah. I, you don't carry your desktop. Yeah. Well, and you st <clears throat> it stays in one place and you can change it out easier. That's one of the yeah. better, better well, for, features. Yeah, for me... You it, can, Swap it out. You can add more RAM very easily. Just take it apart and s put the slot in. Mm -hmm. You can change out graphics cards, which yeah. you can't do on laptops for the most part. Well, it's harder, yeah. F no, no, no. Most of them are integrated, uh, shared between. Yeah. yeah. And you can pretty much do a lot more stuff, change the features faster yeah. and easier in a desktop than you yeah, can Yeah, than laptop. doing laptop. So it's easier to change stuff in a, in a desktop, but the laptop is harder to change stuff in. But it basically goes down to... Are you more portable or are you more stay at home? Now, for me, yeah. for, can I can I do what I can I do what I do? Well, <laughs> the big thing is the battery on the laptop, where it just doesn't. Well, it the, it varies. It varies on what cells cell you, you have. have. Six cell is mine's a two and a half hours. Something like that. And then the nine cell and lasts nine for cells six. Six hours. Six hours. Despite any confusion I said before in a couple segments ago when I said a nine cell battery was nine hours. No. Horribly wrong. Six hours. <laughs> yes, it's six or four. Yeah, so six. Along so, those lines. Yeah, six hours. So, yeah, it, it varies on that, but you can always charge it. Don't leave your laptop plugged in because that you have to train the battery. So, just a little note for people to have a laptop. Don't and, leave it plugged and in. And that's another thing. You have to change the batteries on the You mean laptops. train the batteries? No, laptops. You change the batteries every couple of years. Hmm. And the laptops go yeah. out of style very fast. Well, laptops. Five years average for a laptop. But if you have a desktop, no, wait, we, you just wait, keep wait, them wait, out. wait, wait, wait. Laptops go out of style because they make so many, and people look at no, you. No, because the features change so fast. Features on what? You nobody, instead of taking, the features change. Like the screen, the monitor changes. Mm -hmm. You can't really improve the graphics card. Yeah. So the graphics card is going to go up, and you need. Okay, I see what you're saying. Because the hardware, you can't the really requirements. change out. Yeah. The requirements of everything yeah. changes, yeah. so you have to. Yeah, I see what it. you're saying. So, in the la so yeah, the laptop does not stay as long as the desktop does. So in that case, it's better. And the desktop, you can swap. But that's you why I have a desktop easier. and a laptop. So I just back. So if my laptop goes, I could always back up all my stuff from my laptop onto my desktop. But like for us, we have well, we're changing over to DSL as of the 24th. But yeah, I know <laughs> we're proud. But. For me, when we have the when we have the dial-up, let's say the dial-up goes down or the dial-up is just too slow to download anything, I'll switch over and I'll just go to a public location like the library, and I'll just Do plug it in, or I'll go to Panera or something like that. The local I'll, library. The local library. Yeah. <laughs> and do the downloads there, and you can. And yeah, it's faster. so much faster. Well, it's only one. It's only one. They, one, they limit, they you limit one gig. one megabyte. Yeah, they one, they limit yeah. you one megabyte. So. But yeah, still, it's so much faster than dial-up. So I'd rather, so I go to the library and do it. I can just bring it to the library. Unlike, <laughs> unlike, um, desktop. unlike desktop, where you have to have that in there, not unless we use our dish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got a big dish in the backyard. And you all, can right, just, all right, all right, yeah. okay, okay. Thank yeah. you, Al. Yeah. Thanks for getting off topic. Yeah, I know, anyway, but it's, it's so funny. Anyway. Pretty much it comes down to the whole laptop and desktop, which one's better. Really, if you're mobile, really mobile, you need a laptop. But I, if you have a laptop, you need a desktop usually, yeah. for the most part, unless you're. And it's unless easier. You're really you back your stuff up on that. Not unless you want to back up your stuff on an external hard drive, like a docking station. Mm -hmm. Most laptops come with, if you buy it from like Dell or if you buy it from HP or Toshiba or. <laughs> okay, <laughs> anyway, okay. From companies. <laughs> if you buy it from other companies, most laptops have a, a feature called backup. Re a recovery uh, a, drive. Yeah, a recovery backup. So you could back up all your stuff on there. I don't like that. The one that's on my computer, it failed on me several times. 
his I compact just stuff slash up anyway. HP. Yeah. Because HP took yeah, over yeah, compact. Yeah. So, you know, I, it doesn't really work that well. So what I do is I just back stuff up manually. It ends up backing up my programs, which I don't want because that because they don't back up the exe file. No. So it just backs up all the files, and I don't need the files backed up. Um, so yeah, most programs have that. So it's it it really depends on what it's it's really the software more than so the hardware. So if you desktops, you can just have a regular desktop, and you don't need a laptop. But if you're mobile and you work, and you know you go places very often and you want to use your computer there, you get the desktop and the laptop. That's what I suggest mm -hmm. to have a, a mobile station and a, just a stationary. Yeah, I, I, people that ask me, people that ask me, they're like, should I get a desktop or a laptop? And I says, well, I says, do you have a current desktop? And, I, and they're like, well, no. I said, well, get the desktop first, then get the laptop. It's it's because then you just, you know, it's just so much easier. But I don't know. So I, I really. If, if you really need a laptop, like yeah. if you're going around the world, yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. you don't sit in one place very often, you it's, get the laptop, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But if you're at home and you have a job and you come back and yeah, if you, go back and forth, get the desktop and the laptop. If you That's what have I suggest. to transfer a lot of information, it's better getting a laptop than a flash drive. If you go to school, if you go to college, it's better to get just it's better to just go with a laptop. Okay. You know, some you know some people like, oh well, you know, I want I want to get my kid uh, like the desktop for college. Don't get that. Get the laptop for college. So you know whatever you know whatever varies. Okay, we have our two minute warning. Okay, so we so are going to tell go, you what's what's next. What's going to happen next week? Uh, next week, next yeah. week segments. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't think anyone was in the booth. Storage okay. devices. Ah, uh, that's like um. Flash drives, external hard drives, internal hard drives, etc. CDs, pretty much yeah. anything that holds information. Yeah. And then uh, cell phones versus computers. Yeah. So we're gonna vary, you know, because cell phones are taking over the world so much. Like you know, because the, they're, the BlackBerry Storm, yeah, BlackBerry the Storm, iPhone, iPhone. Yeah, they're they're they're, yeah, being, they're just going. They're taking over. Yeah, they're the taking over computers. Computers in your and, pocket. Yeah, computers they're and cell phones are pretty amazing. Yeah, actually. too similar now. So that's um, our show. Thanks for watching. Yeah. We'll see you next time.